everyone and welcome to this family event brought to you by the Great Exhibition Road Festival. Thank you for joining. Today we're making festive greetings cards. This is an event for families, though everyone is welcome. For today's workshop, you will need an A4 piece of card, white or a pale colour, an A5 or larger piece of dark colour paper, an A5 or larger piece of green coloured paper, though you can use a different colour to have an alternative coloured Christmas tree. A selection of papers, any colour or size. Scissors and glue. A pencil. And uh, coloured pens and pencils. Now, these are just suggestions. So please do get involved um, and use anything you have available uh, at home. So it could be old newspaper cuttings, stickers, glitter, old magazines, really anything you have available at home. My name's Isabella and I'm an artist and illustrator based in London. I'll be your host for today's workshop where you'll get the chance to make a greetings card to give to someone special this festive season. Today, You'll also get to hear about all about the very first Christmas card from our special guest, who I'll be introducing shortly. We've got an online gallery called a Padlet, where you can show us photos of your work, which I would love to see. The link is in the chat, or you can scan the QR code, which will pop up next to me, to access it. I'm so excited to be making festive greetings cards with you all today. You're all in different places and I'm in my studio in North London, but we are all here together for one hour. So that's me. Now we'd like to hear from you. In the live chat, if you would like to, please tell us your names and who the adults and children are so we know who's there. To join in the live chat, an adult simply needs to sign in with a Gmail address. The aim of today's workshop is to make a festive greeting card inspired by the V&A's collections. To make our cards, we will first be cutting and sticking, then we'll be using pens, pencils and or collage to decorate our card. So without further ado, let's get cracking. I'm delighted to introduce you all to our special guest today, Caroline Penn. Hi Isabella. Hi, Hi everyone. Caroline. <laughs> Uh, my name's Caroline and I work at the Victorian Albert Museum, or v &A for short, which is on Exhibition Road in South Kensington in London. I work at the v &A in the National Art Library as a librarian, which means I look after the UK's most extensive public collection of books on art and design. I'm excited to be here with you and take you on a journey through the history of the Christmas card. Fantastic. Well, we'll be taking questions for Caroline all throughout the workshop today, so please do send them through at any time via the live chat. So today we're making a festive greetings card. I've made this example here to show you before we get started. You'll soon find out how this design has been inspired by some of the very first Christmas cards that Caroline will be showing us today. Now, to make the most out of this workshop, I want you to think about who you're going to make, um, who you're going to send or give your card to. So it could be your mum, your dad, your sister, brother, grandparent, friend, or even a pet. Who are you going to make your card for? Let us know now in the live chat. Caroline, who are you going to make your card for today? Uh, I'm going to make mine for my little cousin who I don't get to see very often. Oh, lovely. Well, I'm going to make mine for my mum. Perfect. Great. <laughs> oh, well. I think, you know, just think about who you're going to make your card for today. And if, uh, oh, we've got, Monica's going to make hers for her grandma. Great. I'm excited to see that. Brilliant. A few more seconds. And uh, next 76, it's my brother. Perfect. Well, I'm excited to see that one too. And Emma is my mum. Perfect. So we've got, like me, making mine for my mum. But we'll find out why a little bit later. Just remember who you're going to make your card for. 
But before we begin, Caroline has something to show us all, don't you, Caroline? I do. So I'm going to start by showing you the very first ever Christmas card. Now, this was made in 1843. It was actually commissioned by the very first director of the V&A, Sir Henry Cole, and he wanted a solution to all the unanswered posts that he had piling up during this busy time of year. So he asked his friend, the artist, John Calcott Horsley, to design him a seasonal greetings card. So this copy is in the National Art Library, and it's one that Cole actually received from the artist himself. And you can see in the spaces left for his own personal message, the charming written message to the tune of the nursery rhyme, Old King Cole. And also instead of his name, Horsley has actually drawn a small picture of himself holding paint palette and brushes. Uh, and the next slide we'll see a little bit of a close up of that. Uh, you can see it's um, to my good friend Cole, who's a merry young soul and a merry young soul is he. Uh, and then I can't read all of it, I have to admit. <laughs> Uh, but the card, it shows three generations of Cole's family raising a toast. And on either side, it's framed by trellis work and the scenes there, they show acts of kindness and giving. So the message was one of celebration, but also charity. Uh, so early Christmas cards, they were quite often handmade um, and they were treated as gifts themselves and they were really treasured. Um, the next slide we'll see two cards that were actually donated to the National Art Library. The first one is with the Kingfisher, that one's hand painted. And the second is a hand embroidered card. Uh, and you can see these were made around 1881 to 1889. Now these were kept as treasures by the lady who donated them to the library, Miss MJ Bainton. Um, so they weren't thrown away and they were sort of seen as artworks in their own right. Wow, I really love how ornate these cards are. Yeah. Um, so for today's card, uh, we'll be making a paper lace frame border, a bit like this. Caroline, could you tell us a bit more about paper lace? Of course. Uh, so paper lace was quite a common feature on very early Christmas cards. They actually looked a little bit more like Valentine's cards. So as you can see here, the card on the left is a Valentine's card, but the card on the right is actually a New Year's card and they're, they're very similar. And they both have this sort of paper lace border around them. Uh, and the next slide, you'll see how cards slowly started to look more and more like the cards that we see today with snowy scenes and holly berries, the sort of red, green and gold colours. Uh, and eventually you get robins, uh, children pulling Christmas crackers, which was also invented around the same time. And then eventually a Father Christmas starts to appear. <laughs> wow, those are really great. <laughs> um, wow, so let's get started with our card today. Um, I'll be showing you all what to do step by step. Um, and remember, if you get stuck or if you have any questions about the steps or questions for Caroline, please do send them through the live chat. Great, so let's get started. Great. So to begin, you'll first need your piece of uh, A4 card, so white or pale colour, ideally. So first things first, we're going to fold this in half along the long edge, like so. Just taking time to match the corners. And if, yours, uh, if your piece of paper uh, sorry, your piece of card is slightly bigger or smaller. Don't worry, that's completely fine. Um, so then next, you'll need your piece of dark coloured paper. Um, so here I'm using black A5 paper. And we're going to be making, uh, using this to make a frame for our card inspired by paper lace. So we want to make a square, which is the width of the card. So if your card is the same if your paper is the same size as your card, like mine is, to do this, simply fold the top left corner over to make a half size rectangle. And then you'll have a rectangle, uh, sorry, a half size triangle. And then you'll have a rectangle at the bottom, which you can just mark with a pencil. 
And then we're just going to cut this off. And so you should have a square, which is the same width, the sides are the same width as your card. So if you're using a slightly bigger piece of paper, you can cut it down to size. But if you're using a smaller piece of paper, then that's fine. Just make the biggest square you can, and I'll show you what to do a little bit later. So whilst everyone's making their square, I'm just going to, I've got a quick question for Caroline. Sure. Um, uh, so you said the first card was uh, made in 1843 by Henry Cole, was it? Um, that's a really long time ago. Yeah, it is a long time ago. Um, you know, it's before phones were invented, before the internet. So cards and letters, they were really necessary and they're the only real way of communication at the time uh, for people who you weren't speaking to, obviously. Um, so it was kind of the reason why they were necessary for Henry Cole to start answering his post. <laughs> well, yeah, I hadn't really thought about that. <laughs> That's brilliant. Um, so we'll see how everyone's getting on with their card. So everyone should hopefully have uh, made a square. So um, so now what we will do is we need to um, fold our paper so we can fold it back along, back into a half size triangle along the fold we made before. Then we're gonna fold it in half again. Taking time um, to align, make the folds nice and neat and press them down. And then one last time, we're going to fold our triangle in half again. So once that's done, we will now be using our pencils to draw on our paper lace design. So I have made this template which I know is also up on the Padlet, to show you how to draw on your design. So if you using this design, when you cut it out, it will look like this. And then when you open it up, it will look like this. So this bit can be a bit tricky to get right. And my template is just a suggestion so anything you do will look good. And don't worry, this is the most difficult bit. The next steps are easier. So before you draw on your design, just make sure you've got your triangle the right way round. So there'll be one end, which is your folded end, which is kind of the part where um, it's just one fold. And you'll have another end, which I call the pointy end, as it has all these separate parts at the top. So you want to have that fold towards you before you draw. So now we're going to draw out our design. And there are four parts to it. The first part is this heart shaped heart shape, which creates this kind of internal border. Then we've got the scalloped wavy edge at the top. Then we've got the shape I call an abstract flower. And then we've got a triangle. The important thing to remember is to keep space on the folds between these shapes. Remember when you cut it out, you want it to look a bit like this and all these folded edges will allow you to open it up in one piece. So now take a moment to draw on your design. Can you remind me, Isabella, how many times you have to fold it? Oh, sure thing. Uh, yes. So, so you've got your original square and you're folding that in half into the two triangles. Then you fold it in half again and you fold it in half again. So you're folding it in three times in total. Okay. Thank and you. I'll just show you all. So we've got our square and we're folding it in half once in half again, and then half again. And then you'll have the part which has that center fold facing you and the other end, which has all these kind of separate pieces, which I call the pointy end. 
facing away from you. And then you can draw on your design. Perfect. Great. So once your design's drawn out, you can cut out your design. Again, try in your best not to cut through the these all these edges. This bit can be a bit fiddly. Um, so if you're finding cutting difficult, please do ask an adult to help you. And please do take care as scissors can be sharp. Um, if you do accidentally cut through these folds, then it's not, um, then don't worry, we are sticking this down. So you can always just stick the parts back together again. And also, don't worry if your design doesn't look quite like this and it comes out quite differently. I'm really looking forward to seeing everyone's on the Padlet a little bit later. So whilst we're um, cutting our designs out, um, I've, we had a few more responses uh, of who's making, who they're making, people are making their cards for. So Kiara is making one for her cat, which I'm really excited to see. <laughs> Brilliant. And um, Ellie is also making one for her little cousin. So um, just like you, Caroline. Yeah, that's sweet. Right. So Caroline, you were, um, a lot of the cards you showed us were from kind of Victorian times. What exactly is a Victorian? Um, so a Victorian is someone who was living at the time of the reign of Queen Victoria. So that is uh, 1837 to 1901. Um, so Queen Victoria is actually the great, great grandmother of Queen Elizabeth II, our queen now. Oh, okay. So in some ways, in some ways a long time ago and in some ways not yeah not, you, you, you not know people, their relatives are still living today but it is it is a while ago <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and actually back then um christmas at the start of her reign christmas wasn't a huge celebrate celebration time most of the sort of gift giving and celebrations were done around new year and um, so it was really the victorians that produced a lot of the traditions that we're familiar with now Oh, right. Oh, that's really interesting. Yeah. So I guess, yeah, um, it's all kind of changed a lot since then. But in a way, the Christmas yeah. tradition is still carried through. Yeah. Brilliant. Um, so hopefully everyone now has had a chance to cut out their paper lace. So when you're ready, open it up and see see how it's turned out. So mine looks like this. And so then we're going to be using um, our paper lace to decorate, to create a border for our card. So, um, so I'm going to have to cut mine to fit. Um, so I'm just going to cut it in half, like whip ways. Um, but if yours is a bit bigger or a bit smaller, you can cut it out in a different way just to create a decorative uh, border for your card. And please do, um, when you're, uh, whenever you've got your paper lace, um, stuck down, please do upload uh, a photo to the Padlet because we really would love to see everyone's cards today. I've just stuck mine down, it's looking like this so far. Oh, oh brilliant. My card's nice. a bit bigger than yours, but I think it works still. <laughs> Show it bigger. There you go. <laughs> oh, yeah, perfect. I'm not I'm not the, the best artist, so, you know, you'll find no, that as we go along. <laughs> that's looking great. And I really like the red. It contrasts really beautifully with the um, the white paper. Yeah. So it's almost done mine. Um, so, yeah, so really good to see your... Um, I loved those cards you showed us earlier, Caroline. What is it particularly about that first card that you that you really like? Um, I think what I really love about that very first Christmas card is um, that it, it looks hand-drawn and it's... Um, its message is sort of family and being charitable, giving food and clothing to the needy. And I think that's really sort of heartwarming to see that that's was sort of the, the traditions of Christmas at the time. Um, and the fact that these these were encouraged people to hand make their own cards as well. And they were really treasured objects. Yeah, that's that's really beautiful. I mean, 
it would be a dream for everyone to make all their Christmas cards for <laughs> everyone they always knew. <laughs> yeah. Really I mean, to be fun. fair, Henry Cole, you know, he got someone else to make his for him. So I suppose <laughs> we're, we're always quite busy, aren't we? Yeah. But no, exactly. I think, um, yeah, but I guess it really, really showed the, like, the craftsmanship that did go into that, that first card. It really is yeah. stunning. Um, and it's also interesting uh, that you mentioned they kind of share a lot of similarities with Valentine's cards, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so before Christmas cards really sort of took off, uh, the, the most popular card to send was a Valentine's card. So it was often quite cheaper for people to reuse designs that they had from Valentine's cards that they were sending, um, which is why you often see really early Christmas cards. They have roses or flower bouquets uh, and they look really similar because people are just reusing what they had from the Valentine's cards. Clever. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's that's really interesting. Great. So remember, if you do have any questions for um, about any of the steps or for Caroline, please do drop them in the live chat. And I'm looking forward to seeing what other people have made as well. So hopefully at the end we can have a look in Padlet and see what cards you've made. Yeah, absolutely. Amazing. So I think um, I think we'll uh, we'll give it a, another minute or so, um, and please, yeah, at, at this stage, we please do upload to the Padlet, so we can um, we can take a look, or you can wait until the end when you've completely finished your card. So that's totally fine. Okay. Great. So I think. Um, I'll quickly, I'll move on to the next step of making our cards. So the next step will be making a Christmas tree. I'll show you this example I made earlier. So we'll be making our Christmas tree 3D like this. And I'll be showing you how to do this. Though, if you would prefer an easier step, you can just make a flat tree. So we'll be making our Christmas tree now. So we will say goodbye to Caroline for a few minutes. Perfect. Oh, watch. And yeah, and um, we've had a comment from uh, KC said she likes the paper confetti left um, over from cutting out the frame. And yes, exactly, the the result of cutting out the um, the shapes means you do get, it's, it's a great description paper confetti and you can use those in more craft projects or to make further cards. Um, yeah, it's a really fun um, way of creating something quite decorative quite quickly. Great. So to make our Christmas trees, you will need your green uh, or any other colored um, piece of uh, A5 or um, a, roughly A5 paper. First thing you need to do once you've got your paper ready is fold it in half along the long edge like this. Then we're going to fold one the half, um, the side facing you. We're going to fold this in half by taking the edge and folding it back to that center fold. Essentially folding the half in half again. And then once you've done that, flipping it over and doing the same to the other side. So you're essentially folding your piece of paper in four, but what you will have when you open it up is you'll have a side that has two folds on it and a side that has one center fold on it. So just to repeat that step in case anyone missed it, have my piece of uh, A, 
well, yeah, my piece of green colored paper or any other color you would like to use to make your Christmas tree. Folding it in half, folding one of the edges back to meet that center fold and then flipping it over and doing the same to the other side. Now what you'll need to do is identify the side of the paper which has these two folds. And this will be the side that we're drawing our tree on. And it won't be the side of that center fold. So you want to identify the side with the two folds like this. So the first thing you need to do before you draw out your tree is just measure it up against your card. So with my piece of paper, um, I'm just going to lay it out kind of on the center uh, of where the center where I want my tree to go. And I'm going to leave a bit of room at the top so I can put a tree topper. So I'm just going to grab my pencil and from about here, so leaving this bit of room at the top, I'm just going to draw my tree shape in this kind of three triangle style that you can draw your tree however you like. Now I'm going to give mine a little base. Of course, you can make your tree a bit bigger or a bit smaller, depending on the size of paper you have available. Now, the important thing to note about the way I've drawn my tree is that I've drawn it in one continuous shape. Um, and this is important. So when you cut it out, you'll have um, kind of uh, two, like a, a, like a full um, tree, sorry, um, as opposed to cutting it out into individual kind of triangle shapes or anything like that. So you need this to be kind of one whole shape. Um, and so the only place you should be cutting up to the fold line is at the top and the bottom of your tree. So when you're ready, uh, cut your tree out. Again, making sure to keep it in one whole piece and, um, and also taking care with the scissors. Well, um, while we're all cutting our trees out, uh, we're going to bring Caroline back on screen and she can tell us a bit more about the Christmas tree. Hi again. <laughs> Hi again. <laughs> um, uh, what I really, I really love about the um, card that we're making is, um, and you'll see in a second, how much it reminds me of the, the next image I'm going to show you. So mm. it's very exciting. Yeah, well, I was, I was thinking uh, we haven't actually seen a Christmas tree yet in any of the cards you've shown us. And obviously it's a really big feature in our Christmas and on Christmas cards generally. So could you tell us a bit more about that? Of course. Um, and you can see I've got my, oh, this way, my tree behind me. <laughs> um, Christmas trees actually started appearing in the United Kingdom about 170 years ago. Um, they were actually made popular by Prince Albert, who was the husband of Queen Victoria, who I mentioned earlier. Uh, so he had this illustration published in the magazine called the Illustrated London News, um, which you might sort of liken it to the Twitter feed of the day. Uh, and as you can see, uh, this is the image that really um, reminds me of the card that we're making now. Um, and if you, you zoom in on the next slide, you can see the, the whole royal family are stood around their tree. Um, so you've got Queen Victoria there and Prince Albert, their children. Um, and I believe that's Queen Victoria's mother. Um, and it's lit up with candles and also decorated with glass balls, which we now know to be baubles. Um, and you can see all the presents that are either on the tree or underneath the tree as well. So it wasn't long before Christmas trees started appearing on cards. Uh, and you can see how similar these three cards um, from the later part of the 1800s, they look so similar to that image of um, Prince Albert and Queen Victoria around their tree. Uh, if you fast forward to now, and Christmas trees are such a well-known shape that they don't even need to be trees really to be recognizable. So these are three examples of Christmas trees that we've actually had at the V&A, um, as well as a Christmas card that the V&A sent out with, uh, inspired by a glass chandelier, but made to look like an upside down Christmas tree. <laughs> oh, wow. I think those are absolutely beautiful. Thank mm. you, Caroline. This is really fascinating. If, remember, if anyone at home, <laughs> if anyone at home has any questions or comments for Caroline, please do share them with us in the live chat. Great. So now we're going to go back to making our card. 
So everyone should have uh, their Christmas tree cut out. And you should have two trees which are folded in half. If for some reason you haven't managed to make your 3D trees, remember you can just uh, use a flat tree like this and stick that down. But if you have uh, got your 3D tree, uh, so the edges pop out like this, we'll just be gluing the reverse, the back of the tree um, onto our card. So we'll just do that now. We've had a question from Asia who asks, isn't it dangerous to put lit candles in a tree? <laughs> yes, I would have thought so. And I'm quite pleased we don't do that anymore. <laughs> um, but yeah, of course, back in the 1800s, they didn't have um, any such thing as fairy lights or really electricity. Um, electricity was just being invented, or well, not invented, but batteries and electrical power was being invented. Um, so they did, they used candles, um, which is why baubles became so popular because they were shiny and they'd reflect the candlelight. Um, but I, I don't know the statistics on how many trees actually went up in flames, but <laughs> uh, I'm quite pleased we don't have candles in our trees anymore. <laughs> yeah, me too. That would make everything feel a little bit more dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So everyone should have stuck their Christmas tree onto their card or be about to do so. I've got one half down yeah perfect um so but once you've got your uh tree stuck down it's uh time to draw in our tree topper so um so you take a colored pen or pencil and draw in uh something to top your tree so um this can be anything you like on mine i'm going to do a gold star um but yeah please use your imagination put whatever you like on the top and i'm excited to see what you've done on the padlet a bit later Caroline, what are you putting on the top of your tree? <laughs> I'm actually cheating and I found a gold star stamper pen and I'm going to stamp <laughs> my gold star down. <laughs> well, that sounds good. There's no such thing as cheating, I think. <laughs> Get, getting a bit of creative, bit, getting a bit creative and having fun and making something for yourself or making something to give to someone else as well. Very special. Yeah. Great. So, um, so yeah, when everyone's done, uh, please do put, pop a picture up onto the Padlet. Our cars are starting to take shape, so it would be great to see uh, how everyone's is looking. And I'm sure we'll have lots of different things to look at and lots of different colours. So um, yeah, so Monica uh, Monica's also excited, saying this looks so good. Um, so I'm really excited to see your card, um, see how, how it looks. Yeah, me too. Perfect. Um, the stamper pen has failed me. It's uh, it's clearly very old and not got a lot of ink. So I'm gonna. <laughs> you can always uh, touch it up. I'm sure with an uh, with another pen. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's uh, let's take a quick look at the Padlet. Uh, and see what um, what everyone's worked on so far. Oh, wow. Oh, nice. I like the blue. Great. Yeah, I really like that colour. And yeah, I really like the, um, you've got a really the nice border to it, mm. um, both on the edge and in the inside. That's, that's really nice. And yeah, and, and same in red. Again, really, really beautiful. I love how they really fill out the space of the page as well. Um, <laughs> cool. Dog luck too. <laughs> oh, that's perfect. Yeah. So, so it's really great to see everyone's on Padlet. So please do pop them on at any time. You can pop them on whilst you're making it, and then uh, again at the end when, when, um, when you're finished, and we can take a look at them. We'll be looking at them throughout the workshop today. So perfect. So, um. I finished my tree topper, so I'm now going to show you uh, one of my favourite objects from the collection, um, which is in the National Art Library. Um, it's actually a letter that was sent on New Year's Eve back in 1854. Um, it was from Sir George Scharf, who was actually the director of the National Portrait Gallery at the time, um, to a Mrs Stobin, who I believe was a friend of his. 
she'd written to him saying that she hadn't been able to visit and see his tree. So on the back of the letter is a drawing of the tree that Miss that uh, George Scharf has drawn himself. And as you can see, it's full of annotations of descriptions of all the decorations and the presents that he had around his tree. Uh, and I will read some of those annotations to you now. Um, so here you can see one of many glass balls of silver and various colours which reflect the light brilliantly. So that's how I was saying before, the baubles really reflected the candlelight around the room and really shone nicely. Um, underneath there you can see there's gold paper net cut out by young ladies. <laughs> so possibly similar to things we're cutting out at the moment. Um, and we've got gloves for gentlemen and servants under the tree. And things like pink satin and straw baskets of sugar plums. So really um, exciting things that he's got on his tree. And that's what I love about this item is because you can really see how pleased the author is about his tree and all the decorations that are on there. And the thought that's really gone into everything is amazing. Yeah, it's, it's really beautiful. I think that that's one of the most beautiful trees I've ever seen in an like, <laughs> illustration form, really. It just, yeah, you can definitely see how how excited um, how excited he was to, about it by everything and the amount of detail he's gone into. It's really beautiful. I mean, it's only, uh, what, six years after the illustration I showed you that Prince Albert had. Um, so tree, Christmas trees were quite a new fad, new thing <laughs> at the time, so... Oh, there's a question from Casey. Can you go over how you glued the two trees on? Oh, of course, yes. Um, perfect. So, um, so what I did is um, let's see if I've got a quick example. Can just show you? Yeah. So I had my two trees. It's just an example I made earlier. So you should have um, having kind of folded them, cut them out, and then open them should hopefully have these two kind of um, half, well, these, yeah, two folded trees. So if they're kind of laid flat, they're a, they're a full tree, but in half they um, pop out like this. So, um, and then with your card, just gluing just the one side, just the back. So uh, putting the glue on here, and then when you stick them down, the two, um, these two parts will uh, stay um, stay kind of popped out and three dimensional from your card. So you just need to put a bit of glue um, on the back, and then remember to placing it uh, place it on your on the front of your card, um, and leaving a bit of room at the top to draw in a tree chopper tree topper um, when you're done. Fab, thank you, Casey. So I think now uh, we're going to decorate our Christmas trees inspired by the letter that Caroline just showed us. So do you uh, do you remember at the start of the workshop uh, when I asked you to think about who you're going to make your card for? Well, we're going to be decorating our tree with all of their favourite things so that your recipient knows exactly um, that knows that you made this card especially for them it, very much like the letter that Caroline showed us which has inspired the workshop part of the workshop today so I'm making my card for my mum but you can make it for whoever you like and together we're going to decorate our trees with hand-drawn baubles inspired by their favourite things so to follow along Take a moment now to think about two to five things that your recipient really likes. So, Caroline, uh, who will um, you said you were doing decorating your tree, making the card for your cousin, right? Yes, yeah. Um, and she is just turned six, actually. Um, so, I think I'm going to attempt to draw a little picture of her favorite teddy bear and pop that <laughs> on there. Um, and the last time I saw her, I baked her some biscuits. So I'll, I'll, I'll try and draw some biscuits too. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't love biscuits? I mean, yeah, <laughs> it's a great idea. And uh, you heard my dog earlier, but she loves my dog. So I'm going to draw a little picture of my dog as well. Um, as I said, I'm not a great artist. <laughs> <laughs> 
but I'll but attempt it. I have entire faith in you, Caroline. Just put lots of love. <laughs> Just uh, just go for it. I think don't hold back. That's always my advice when it comes to drawing. A lot of people get kind of worried that it won't look exactly like the real thing. But sometimes the beauty in drawing is that the drawing is is an uh, is a like entity all by itself, and it doesn't need to look exactly like very realistic or like the thing you were trying to draw. It can just be your interpretation of it, which can be really special as well. And she'll definitely know it was handmade by me, I think, as well. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Fab. So, um, so yeah, so again, just take, uh, remember who um, you were going to make your card for. So I said my mum and Caroline's making it for her cousin. Um, and so uh, think of two to five things that they really like. Um, and we'll be drawing these as baubles on our tree today. So if anybody already knows what they're going to do, please, you can tell us through the live chat. Um, always really excited to to know what um, what everyone's going to be drawing today, and we'll see them on a padlet a bit later, I'm sure. So, so I'm going to show you mine, just to give you an idea. So again, I'm really looking forward to seeing all the different things uh, that people, all the different things that people decide to do on the padlet. So I'm making my card for my mum, and I know she really likes elephants, tea, books, and croissants. So I'm going to draw baubles with these things on. If you prefer, you can keep your baubles with more classic round shapes and instead, by, uh, instead be inspired by your recipient's kind of favourite colour or spell out their name on the tree, a bit like this example I made earlier. Really, the possibilities are endless. <laughs> so to follow along, do take a few minutes now to draw your baubles onto different pieces of coloured paper. I've done mine already to show you, so you can focus now and draw yours out. Also, if you prefer, you can draw them straight onto the tree. Um, and of course, you can spend as long as you like on this beyond the workshop today. So we'd really love to see what everyone's done on the Padlet by the end of the workshop. So just to show you. I think you there's another, another picture on Padlet that we could have a look at. Oh, actually. perfect. So I'll just um, quickly show you the little baubles I've done and we'll take a look at the Padlet. Um, so yes, yeah, said an elephant and a cup of tea. Hmm. I've got a little book and a little croissant. And so, yeah, so now take, um, We've got a while now, so um, so draw out your baubles, and in a moment, uh, we'll go through the process of cutting them out and sticking them on your tree. Perfect. So let's let's take a quick look at the padlet and see see what's on there. Ooh, this is looking really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, amazing! Oh, wow, I'm loving this. I'm loving the colours. It's like I love the really bright mm. tree top as well, and I love the, um, the pink and the purple. That's really—it's like an explosion of of yeah. festivities. It's great. It actually, reminds me of um, one of the trees I showed you that we had at the V and A, um, where it was all made up of um, little origami birds, I believe, that were all put together to make a tree shape. That really reminds oh, me. Of that's, that's really lovely, actually. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, perfect. Well, we're always so. Oh, yeah, exactly. There right. it is. <laughs> <laughs> the one on the right. <laughs> mm. That's beautiful. Um, so yeah, so please again, it's a joy to see. Oh, we've got oh, we've got more oh, in the palette. Brilliant. More. Oh, these are amazing. Oh, I love the uh yeah, I love that. Yep. Yeah. So again, you don't your paper lace can kind of take any shape and style. So it's really cool to see everyone's because um I really like seeing all the different ones and the different trees as well, everyone's trees. Um, these are great. A lot of people are going for red belt borders, which works really nicely, and the blue is blue and purples. Yeah, these oh, are nice. great. Perfect. Oh, I love the um, the little dots that you've done on your paper lace there. That's um, so paper lace on the cards. It, it was also it was done by um, cutting out, but also they would emboss designs on paper. So that kind of looks like embossing, where you've got um, mm. a design sort of that sticks up above the surface or printed onto the surface. Um, though, which really reminds me of that. So that's really pretty. Yeah, that's that's really that's really amazing. I like it a lot. <laughs> cool. 
Great. Oh, well, they're really a real joy to see. So we look forward to seeing more and more on the Padlet as people make progress with their uh, with their trees and their baubles. Perfect. So, um, so yeah, so I guess whilst everyone's getting on with their um, with their uh, with their baubles, um, I've just got a few more questions for Caroline. So, um, so where did Christmas trees come from? Um, well, it's actually a German Christmas tradition already, um, and Prince Albert was a was German, so he brought them over to the UK. Britain um because he wanted to have a lot of his German Christmas traditions when he moved to Britain um so a lot of a lot of what we have um Christmas traditions for are originally from Germany oh interesting and like I guess um so that was obviously you know I not not too long ago really I mean what did people do before Christmas trees um well before Christmas trees I think, as I said before, like Christmas wasn't the um, main time to celebrate or give gifts around uh, that time of year. It was really New Year that was sort of the traditional gift giving time and when people would do most of their celebrating. Um, but and Christmas was sort of more that time for family and um, being sort of charitable and thinking about the sort of Christian traditions that it came from. Um, and I think what we have now is really a sort of hybrid of those two things where, where we, we still have that family connection and, and that sort of um, giving aspect of it. But also we do a lot of the uh, gift giving and celebrating and, and lots of nice foods and, and, and times when you can do something a bit different out of your normal day to day. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, that's one of the one of the reasons I really like Christmas cards, because I feel um you know, obviously Christmas, we love to see our friends and family as much as possible, but you can't always see everyone. And so I feel like that's why sending mm -hmm. a Christmas card is often that, that um, letting somebody know that you're thinking of them at this time of year, where it's just so much about, you know, spending time and seeing the ones we love. So um, yeah, it's a really nice tradition, I think, to, to keep going. Yeah. And I think, I mean, we're all aware of what happened last year and um, I wasn't able to see any of my family last year so I did send them all Christmas cards it made me feel a little bit like we were at least spending some of the time together yeah absolutely no and they um yeah and I guess and when you hang it's a bit like the way you might put photos up in your um you know pictures up in your home which remind you of people and places you've been I guess cards can do a similar thing when you've put a card up from someone and every time you look at it you know that they've sent it to you and just yeah a nice a nice feeling yeah and I think sometimes um you know we don't I don't well I don't get a much post nowadays so it's really nice to receive actually something in the post a physical thing yeah post that isn't I guess a, a, a last <laughs> thing you've had to order online yeah. didn't have time to go to the shops <laughs> Yeah, and that um that whole uh, displaying Christmas cards and collecting them and putting them on your walls that was something that um Victorians really love to do. They love to um, collect Christmas cards, and there was I mean there was Victorians like to collect lots of things, um, but they also collected Christmas cards and keep them. That's well, interesting because in. um I guess Christmas cards could be seen as something wasteful or throwaway nowadays. So I get so it wasn't the same in the past. No, no, um, they would often be kept for a long time, um, especially like all the handmade ones. They were really treasured. Um, I think the ones I showed you before, the the sort of embroidered and uh, I think Mimi's getting them up for us. There you go. Um, they were they were really treasured and uh, they were they were were kept um, and collected. As I say, like uh, we start to see all the the traditional, you know, hollies and snowy scenes and things like that. It was really a time for because there was so many cars being made and, and kept and collected, that these sorts of um, traditions were really developed at that time as well. There's a question from uh, Asia. Uh, people give gifts to each other for Easter uh, back then and now. Uh, that is a very good question. I think, um, yeah, definitely. I, I not. So much nowadays, I don't give gifts at Easter, but um, when I was a child, I would get gifts for Easter. So I, I'm presuming that that was something that lots of other people did as well. Um, and I think uh, Easter time, it was also about um, 
uh, baking for things. People would make food for people and give that as gifts. I'm, I'm not an expert on Easter, but that's what, from what <laughs> I know, um, people would quite often do that as gifts in Easter time. Yeah, I can imagine the uh, the chocolate Easter egg is a fairly recent <laughs> thing in the grand scheme of things. But yeah, I guess baking something delicious for someone would be like a really nice alternative. Because <laughs> quite often people have been fasting before Easter as well. So it was like a, a nice thing to break their fast. Um, yeah, I don't know about when Easter eggs were invented. I'll have to be something I look up and <laughs> <laughs> do something on later. The v &A should have a collection of <laughs> Easter eggs to uh, show everyone. <laughs> Oh, dogs okay. go. They like Easter eggs too. Yeah. Great. Well, let's, um, whilst everyone's still having to go drawing their baubles, let's take a look at the Padlet. Um, just because I think there's a few more things on there we can take a look at. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. We've got three tone paper lace. That's looking amazing. And I love the, uh, the star on it as well. So, and it's got glitter. I think it's glitter on there or, very shiny, mm. it's looking great. And oh, another nice. one, else? yeah, beautiful. So I can see it's it's like a paper lace inspired bauble. That's really interesting. Really nice. Beautiful. I like the way they're hanging from the top of the cards as well. Oh, oh, oh see, I love the, uh, the use of a bird as a tree topper. <laughs> That's great. We've actually, on my Christmas tree, we use a little, um, little like owl doll we've got um oh, a tree topper. Uh, yeah I don't know where it came from but it's got, <laughs> that, that reminds me a lot of my tree actually and I love the green and the red getting a beautiful contrast mm. use of colors people got nice shiny card yeah that's perfect oh brilliant well great to see how they're all coming along um and yeah so if um so yeah so you can decorate your tree with um with like hand-drawn baubles um or you can draw straight onto the tree um but thinking about all the favorite things uh that your um recipient would really like to see on their card um so i can see all those beautiful trees and i can imagine them looking oh so more special with little personalized touches it's really exciting to see i've got three baubles up on my tree so far so uh... <laughs> Bit, bit dark shadows in this room I'm in, but um, and I've because I don't think they are very good drawings. I've put little labels oh. as to what they are for each one, so it reminds me of that letter I said. Yeah, I think that's a really good idea. <laughs> <laughs> so they know, so they know. Oh, that looks that looks really great. Um, I guess I'm gonna move on now and start sticking my baubles on. Um, so, um, so on my card, um, just as mentioned, I've cut my baubles out. And I'm just going to arrange them now on my tree. And then, um, and then when you're happy with the arrangement, when you're happy with the arrangement, you can stick them down just using your glue. It's a comment from M. Saar. Um, they're so creative and really wonderful to receive. Oh, they're very special. <laughs> oh, there you go. That's really nice. I'm so glad. That's beautiful. Yeah. I think it's such a nice idea adding like a that kind of hand drawn personal touch to a card. It's definitely something I've taken away from the Victorians. It's a really nice, <laughs> or those cards you showed us generally, rather. It's a really nice um, idea. So once you've um, once you've stuck your baubles onto your tree. You can just uh, use a pencil to add some finishing, a coloured pencil or pen, sorry, to add some finishing touches. So I'm just going to draw little loops on the top of my baubles just to make them look like they're hung on the tree. And then you can also just draw in a bit of tinsel or kind of um, paper chains or other decorations as you like. I actually thought some of my... Um cutoffs from when I made my paper lace they made quite good tinsel so I might attempt Ooh. to do that one so we'll, we'll see how we get on that's a really good idea well of course if um if uh even if you don't finish in the workshop today you can keep adding more and more decorations and details to your tree um so um so yeah it's it's all up to you to be really creative and you can also of course make more of these kinds of cards 
had some really lovely comments. Um, so you, of course, can make these cards for anyone and everyone you would like to give a personalised card, personalised festive greeting card to this year. Okay, so, um, so here's my finished card. And I can't wait to see all of yours on the Padlet in a moment. This is really good. I clearly have a lot in common with your mum. I love books, <laughs> tea and croissants. And, I, you know, I love them too, so. <laughs> she also used to work, uh, it's a bit different to you, I know, but she also used to work as a librarian. So, uh, uh... <laughs> no, pretty much a librarian. <laughs> Yeah, so please, um, please, if you haven't already, please do add your pad, uh, to add your photos of your festive greeting cards to the Padlet because we really want to take a look um, before the session ends in a few minutes. Even if you haven't finished, you can continue adding more baubles and more decorations to your card even after the workshop ends. What I think is really good, and I can see from what well, looks to me like some of the ones in the Padlet, they've um, they've taken old like Christmas cards they've received and, and maybe reused them as well. That's a really good idea. Yeah, Chris, old Christmas cards. Um, old and wrapping, wrapping paper. paper. Yeah. yeah, it's a really good way to use it. And um, yeah, exactly. It does a lot of the, especially if you're if you're not the most um, practiced drawer in the world, it can be a really good way to quickly add a festive touch to your own handmade Christmas cards. Great. So we're looking at the Padlet, um, and these are oh, wow. great. So we've got we've got shiny glitter. I can see or sequins as well, making that really pop. That looks like a, a party, a, a card for somebody who really likes the <laughs> festive festive season. Yeah, it's great, and yeah. I like the presents under the tree as well. That's Definitely really good. And you can see um, similar to the letter I showed that. That person really loves that tree, you know, <laughs> all the sort of excitement that there is around that tree. So, absolutely, it's great. So, we've got some really beautiful cards up on the Padlet. Um, so, if you haven't already, please do put a picture up because um, the work we're going to, um, the workshop ends in just a few minutes. Got a little bit of tinsel on now. So, that's a it's a bit from my paper lace that I cut off that I've now started. Oh, I really like that. Yeah, <laughs> adding the, the kind of three-dimensional tactile quality. Yeah, that's really great. Yeah, I think I'll uh, maybe add a bit bit more to my tinsel just in the last couple of minutes, but so everyone can see again. This is how my card's looking. But yeah, I'm really loving how um how many kind of different colours and kind of papers um, and drawings um and materials are in all the ones um on the padlet it's great it's, it's so many beautiful cards oh perfect oh yay so we've got some the tree the decorations going on these trees and they're looking absolutely wonderful I love the illustration of that dog. That's very yeah. That's that's really good. <laughs> <laughs> Mine looks more like a fox, but yours definitely. Yeah. Looks like a dog. And they're beautiful. I love this. Uh, yeah, I can see somebody also likes. It looks like somebody likes a glass of wine on there as well, which <laughs> cards for mummy or daddy. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, thank you so much. So I think that's all we have time for today. Unless there's any others on the Padlet, um, I think. I think that's all we've got time for oh we've got another another few on the padlet oh yeah perfect oh yes okay great nice. oh love it music who does not love music that is amazing love that and the paper lace as well it's a really ornate design oh and we've got some de the decorations going on our explosive tree that's looking really great so amazing well thank you all so much for posting on the padlet um i think yeah that's all we've got time for today so thank you so much 
for joining our workshop. Um, a recording that will be available here on YouTube in a few minutes time for you to rewatch or share with your friends. We are posting a link in the chat to a quick survey where you can tell us what you thought of the workshop today. We'd really appreciate it if you could take a few minutes, uh, just five minutes to complete it. Please keep your eye out for future family workshops from the Great Exhibition Road Festival. And of course, a big thank you to Caroline uh, for joining us. I've been Isabella, your host, and from both of us, goodbye. Bye. Bye. <laughs>